Good morning, everybody. As we go to the um, as we go to the uh, chitas of today, we are holding in the book of uh, Mitzayda and the way the Mitzayda becomes pure on the day that he comes to the base of Midrash. Holding in chapter 14, verse number 13, and he slaughters the, the lamb, the place that he slaughtered the, the other two, as the, uh, the, uh, the sin offering and the burnt offering, the Mokim Kedush, in a, in, a, in the in the place of the in the holy in the holy place with the base of Midrash and the, by the by, as Rashi will soon explain the north side of the Mizbeach ki krechates ha'asham who because the regarding the kain service the guilt offering is like a sin offering kodesh kadoshim who the guilt offering and the sin offering are both holy of holies. So Rashi says. Namely, on the side of the copper altar at the north of the sanctuary courtyard. But what is this verse coming to teach us? Was it not already stated regarding the law of a guilt offering in Pasha at the Tzavah and before in Leviticus 7, 2? That the guilt offering is required to be slaughtered, uh, to be slaughtered in the, the north, since the guilt offering differs from the other guilt offerings. In so far, it requires placing together with the with one of the bringing it. One might think that the animal should be slaughtered where it is placed at Nikonos Gate, and not on the north side of it, because it needs to. He needs to the the Mitzayda needs to be there. Scripture therefore tells us he shall be slaughtered the land of the place one slaughters a sin offering, the burnt offering. That even though this guilt offering needs to be closer to the person that brought it. So the uh, as we learned yesterday, the Mitzayda is at the door of Nikonar. He's at the door of, of the gate of, of the courthouse, and he's not by the altar. So you might think that uh, we bring the altar there, or I mean, bring the animal there. So it tells us no. You have to slaughter it by the place you slaughter all the other sin offerings. Kikachatas, kikakolchatas. This offering is like any sin offering. Asham this guilt offering is like any other uh, um, sin offering. Hula kain is to the kain in all procedures of the holy service performed by the kain. This guilt offering is likened to the sin offering. This is specified so that one should not say that since the blood of this guilt offering is unlike that of the guilt of, of other guilt offerings. So far, it's placed in the cartilage, as the title will soon say. It's placed in the cartilage of the ear, on the thumb, and the big toe. So it's not like any other offering, because this has done something totally different. It should be also be an exception that it should be required application of blood and prescribed fast upon the altar. Therefore, the Torah says no. Regarding the service of the Kohen, the guilt offering is not like a sin offering. However, if it's so, one might think that blood is applied above the red line like the blood of the offering in the scripture that tells us in chapter 7, verse 10, 1. And this law of the guilt offering where the Tertoida law is inclusive to him, coming here to include this special guilt offering that its blood should be applied to blow the red line as with all gift offerings, even though in all other aspects of this sacrifice, it's similar to a sin offering. So therefore, the Torah wants to emphasize that this guilt of this asham, as you said, you have a, you have three offerings over here. You have a chatas, you have an asham, and you have a, a, a oila. This guy brings three offerings, three animals, two uh, two male and one female, or two two female, one male. So he's bringing three three sacrifices here today. One is a chatas, one is a sin offering, one is a, one is a burnt offering, an oila, and one is a guilt offering. This guilt offering. If you remember the laws of a guilt offering, it's different than a sin offering. Uh, but this guilt offering is like the sin offering. And the, that's what the trader wants to tell us. Of it. The guilt offering over here is exactly like the sin offering, even though when you remember 
in the beginning of, of Ayikra, a guilt offering was different than a sin offering, but over here it was the same. That's what Rashi is telling us. Verse 14. The Kayan takes some blood of this guilt offering. And this is only done now by this situation. He takes some of the blood. He places above the cartilage of the right ear. He places a drop of blood on the right hand, on the thumb of the right hand. And on the big toe of the right foot. This is only done in such a situation. So the middle wall of the ear, the middle wall of the ear, right? The ear has a, has a, has a wall, the first wall around the ear. He puts it in the middle, right in between the, the ear. There's like, a, there's like a valley. And he puts it right in between there. The actual etymology of the term tenuch is unknown to me, whether it's a Hebrew or Aramaic. But its interpretation is interpreted, but the interpreters call it tenderon. Boyin, Boyin, now she says, is a thumb of the big toe. Then the Kayan takes some of the lug, some of the oil. The Yatsaka Kafa Kayan smallest, and he pours it into the Kayan's left palm. Then the Kayan takes from the oil that's in his left palm. The Tava came Etzpei Hayamanis. The Kayan takes, dips his right index finger in some of the oil. And what does he do with it? Asher Akapi smells, which is in his left hand. The Hizam and Hashem Be'etzpei Shempam, and he sprinkles the oil towards seven times before the Lord. What does that mean? Up is the direction of Holy of Holies. Verse 17, And all the leftover oil that's in his palm, he again places it in the cartilage of the right ear where he put the blood, he places it in the right ear of the person being cleansed. And his right thumb, and on his right toe, on top of the blood of the guilt of. Verse 18, in the left over oil, which is in the palm of his hand. He takes the rest of the oil, puts it on the head of this Mitzayra, the one who's becoming pure. And the Kayin will effect atonement before the Lord. Verse 19, and then the Kayin will perform the service of the sin offering. And we just explained the guilt offering. Now he goes back to the sin offering. And he cleanses this, this guy from all his impurities. After that, he slaughters the burnt offering. And then the Kayim brings up the burnt offering and the meal offering on the altar. The Kayim will bring atonement to this person and he will be pure. Now she says, the meal offering, a collective term referring to all three libations, meal offering of these animals. Every one of these animals had a meal offering and a libation. So there was three meal offerings, three libations, three animals. This was an expensive day for the Matsuda. That completes the Chumash of today. We go now to the, 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 the Tanya of the day. Today is the third day of, of, of Nisan. We are holding in the middle of chapter 39 of, the, of Tanya. And Al Tareb has said something powerful yesterday. And he said that every single one of us needs to have kavana. If we have the capacity of kavana, 
like the righteous people that have kavana, intellectual understanding, meditation, and they awaken up in, through their meditation, love and fear of God, that's great. Minimum kavana is that you have you think about God and you wake it up in your mind a love of God. Even if you cannot awaken your heart a true love of the Abish, to awaken it up in your mind. Think about God. Contemplate the greatness of God. Think about it for a couple of minutes. And that will wake it up, at least in your mind, some aspect of love of God, even in your mind. Now, the truth is, Dr. Rebbe now says, but that might not, so it's not real. Because real love and love and fear is not in the mind. Real love and fear is in the heart. So now, the Rebbe now proceeds to amplify his previous statement. This is a very powerful statement. I not feel him in This inability of one's divine service to ascend to the sphere applies not only to one whose motive for engaged in Teira and Mitzvahs is actually Shalei Lashma. Now, oh, I'm sorry, so the that I concluded, I'm sorry, yesterday, that if somebody doesn't even do this lower thing, that he doesn't have any thought at all, he doesn't have any meditation, doesn't have nothing, so he has no, he does, does everything through Thus, through uh, like a machine, then his then his uh, then his mitzvahs don't go up. Then his his it, there's no connection. So the Alter Rebbe says further. He emphasizes this. Somebody applies not only to one who motivated for engaging in and mitzvahs and actually for not for its own sake, meaning for some ulterior motive. Heaven forbid. He's having, he's coming to he's coming, he's doing it for some selfish reason. In which case, one actually is serving himself. He's not serving God, he's there to serve himself, not God. And a service surely cannot ascend to stand before God. How can a service stand before God when he's basically servicing himself? As it says, it says in the verse. The verse describes it. Their fear of me is like the commandments of men done by rote. God says to the prophet, the Jewish people are basically machines. They're basically machines. They're doing everything out of nature. That's the way they're like a machine. They have no idea what they're doing. They're not thinking a second what they're doing. They're just doing things like a machine. Done out of rope, done out of this is what we do, this is what we do. This means a person who does something out of habit, acquired by his youth. This is the way he was, this is the way he was taught. That's what he does. Had he thought for a moment what he's doing? No, he's just doing things out of rope, he's just doing things that this is the way it is. That he's been trained and taught by his father and his teacher. You deserve love to fear God and to serve him. That's it. Why? He doesn't know. He doesn't think about it. He does keep sun trucking. But he does not really do it for the sake of the Shema. For the sake of heaven. In the Shema Mamish, that out the Rebbe says, listen to this. In the Shema Mamish, when you say the Shema, the Shema means for the name. The Shema means for God. You cannot say he did something for God if he didn't think about it. You need to, I need to awaken up a natural, intellectual, Fear and love of God in my mind. To bring it out from the concealment of my heart. To bring it at least to my mind. And from the crevices, the, the hidden aspect of the heart. But at least bring it in my mind. 
Because if not, I've never done a lishma. I've not done it for God, the Alter Rebbe. I've done it for myself. I've done it because my father told me to do it. So I've never served the Yevishter. So the Alter Rebbe is telling every one of us, we need to think about God. We must think about the Yevishter. And again, even though my thought in God is not going to awaken up my love of God, but it will awaken up some love of God in your mind, in my mind. And that's what I need to do. Because that's my capacity. That's my capability. So, the, so you look at the explanations. If one cannot arouse his natural love of God to the point where it's actually felt in his eyes, he must try, as discussed above, to arouse at least so that's felt in the conscious mind, even though it's not ultimately real within him, but it's in his mind real. Even this low level of arousal can produce a will to resolve to study Torah and fulfill mitzvahs. Thus, the resulting divine service can, contains at least some degree a force of kavana in his natural love. Since this love that he created is a resolve of now influencing in his mind. We all need kavana. If, however, one does not produce even a minimal level of arousal, love, although natural found in his heart, he has, he has no bearing on his divine service, and he cannot therefore do this service of Shema for his own sake. So it's a selfish service. If I have no time to think what I'm doing, if I have no time to, 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 to contemplate what I'm doing, I don't push to doing something out of, out of a machine like. So basically, I'm a machine. It's nothing to do with, it's not to do with the Abish. It's basically some kind of machine that is working. Just as one does not do something for his fellow. Out of his friend's will, unless he loves him or fears him. So most of us do favors for another. For why? To help us somebody else or to help ourselves? So if I if I if I'm doing it for the other, then I'm thinking about the other. If I'm doing it for myself, then I'm thinking about myself. So hopefully, when I do something for somebody else, I'm thinking about that other person. I'm not thinking about myself. I'm thinking how I can help out this person. So too, when it does like it, when it comes to somebody else, another person, so too it's in the concept of me to me and God. I can't do something for God if I'm not thinking about God. If I'm not thinking about God, if I don't have a moment of thought that I'm doing something for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so how can I do something? How can I feel? How can I do it for him? I'm not even thinking about him. And I don't have any, so I don't have any thought of God to say, I want to do something for you. Even though I don't have a great, I, again, I don't have the ultimate to have as Hashem, but I want to do something for you. I want to do something. I'm thinking about a Kodesh Baruch Hu. I'm thinking about God. I want to do something for God. And that awakens up that I want a relationship with God. I want a relationship with God. That's like when I do something for somebody else. I want to have a relationship with that person. I'll him if he can. Even if he can't open, uh, if, if he can't arouse the emotions openly in his heart. One who observes mitzvah out of habit, however, lacking even as a minimal arousal of love, cannot describe the serving God for his sake, even though his performance is impelled by no ulterior motives. Basically, a machine. The Abishta wants the service of a human being. A human being means that he has ava and ira. That's a human being. 
God wants my service. My service is when I serve God with love and fear of God, love and awe of God. How minimal that love and awe of God is not important. It's important that I serve God not as a machine, but as a love, not even as that's that's I, I, we that's why the author I said before, even angels are called animals. Because that's them, they don't they don't have any intellect, it's the service of God. We need to serve God as humans. God doesn't want us to be angels. He doesn't want us to be animals. He doesn't want us to be machines. He wants to be humans. And the Abish gave us a seichel. That's the way it is. That I have an intellectual, I have intellect. And, I, and, and the more intellect I have in what I'm doing, the more I create a love and, and an awe of what I'm doing. And if not, I'm basically a machine. So therefore, the Abishta is asking every Jew, Ladas Hashem, to know God and to awaken up in his mind of love of God. Because then I am not a machine. Then I am a human being that serves the Abishta because it's what I want to do and what I enjoy doing and what I want to accomplish. Then the Rebbe says further, the Gamma Ava, the Alta Rebbe says further, the Alta Rebbe, the Gamma Ava Lavad, furthermore, the arousal of love alone. And in Nikkin Shema Veda, even love alone is not a service. The Li Yida Tatala Pavel, if you don't have a little bit of Yida, your mind needs to think about the greatness of God. And that thing, and, and, and if you understand what it means to think about the greatness of God, it has to create these two emotions. The Abishta gave that the mind uh, creates two concepts in an emotion of a person love and fear. Now, really, there are two levels of fear. It's called Yiratata, lower level of fear, which means fear of uh, punishment, you know, fear of uh, God's. Wrath, uh, Gehenna, whatever you want to call fear. And then there is Yiri Law, there's a higher level of fear, which is awe. So, really, we need to have awe of God. That's what we need to ultimately reach up to, to awe of God. But at least the lower, if you cannot reach up to that level where you're in awe of Akadish Baruch, Hu, in awe of God, at least reach up to the level in your mind that you're afraid of Him. If God is so great and He's all powerful, and he's all knowing, and he's all loving, and he can do anything that he wants, and he can change my life from the good to the bad. So I should have some, some should have respect of him. Shouldn't I have some respect of him? Shouldn't I have some fear of him that he can make my life good? He can make my life bad. It's good to be God. But if I don't have that concept, so I fool myself. A lot of people fool themselves. So oh, God is all loving. Hey, no, no, don't worry about that. No, everything is great. That's not a, that. That then, then you don't have his bondness. You don't even have the lower level of understanding God. God is a God of justice. Ms. God is a God of truth. And Ms. Is Ms. <laughs> truth is truth. And therefore, in the, in, in, in the Rambam, even Rambam says one of the, one of the 13 principles of faith of God is the reward and punishment. There's a concept of reward. There's a concept of punishment, God forbid. There's a, there's a concept of cause and effect. So not everything is just, oh, God is, oh, ba, ba, everything's wonderful. No. Just like in any relationship. If I have a relationship, I want a relationship with something, it's cause and effect. I'm, I'm good to the person. They're good to me. I'm bad to the person. There's a cause and effect. They're not going to. There's going to be. They're not going to be nice to me. It's just a normal situation in life. So this concept of thought, don't fool yourself that it only falls into the category of love. It also needs the level of fear of God. Accepting yourself the yoke of heaven. This is a responsibility. It's not all about Ava, it's also about responsibility. She was dead, I and mean, the truth is, this concept of fear of God, even the lowest level of fear, is in the heart of every Jew. 
Because again, every person, you'll learn Chassidus already for a long time, you'll read every person has Ava and Yira. You have the two basic principles of emotion, love and fear. And therefore, we should only have love of God and fear of God. We should have nothing else in the world love, and we should surely not fear the world. We should have partial fear of the world. The problem is we have fear of the world, and we don't fear our Kodesh Baruch even at the basic level. The famous Rabbi Shabiechem and Zakei, I wish you would have fear of God like you fear the Roman uh, policeman. So uh, when, when we're driving down the street and we, we see the, 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 the flashing things behind us, everybody gets nervous and the guy's after him. If we would have the same simple fear of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, if we were afraid that I and Roy of is the eye that sees and the ear that hears, and uh, we would all have, we all wouldn't do an Aveda. We all wouldn't do a sin. But, we're, we are more, but I'm more afraid of the policeman than I'm afraid of God. Why? Because I know the policeman has power. For some reason, in my mind, I can't even conjure in my mind that God has power. So what does that show? That shows basically I have, I have more, I understand more that the police has power. I don't believe that Abish has any power. So therefore, when, I, when the policeman is behind me, even when he's not having, he doesn't even have his lights on, there's a there's a little bit of fear that comes in my mind. I get a little scared, right? I slow down. <laughs> or I start worrying. You know, is he looking at me? Is he, is he, is he watching my, 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 my movements, what I'm doing? The ape is on top of me. He's watching me oh, 24-7. He's right behind me like any other policeman is behind me. And that's, you need to have that. If you understand, if you meditate on God, you have to have these two concepts, the love of God and the fear of God. God is watching over you. Which these two concepts, Ava and Yida, are, 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 are hidden in, the, in, the, in, the, in every human being, has these two levels of love and fear. He just has to awaken it in his mind. The love and fear of our Kaddish Baruch Hu, as our commission is Bola Kaman, we will explain even more later. And that completes the Tanya of today. My friend, today is the third day of the month. The Tilim of the day is chapter 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. Chapter 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22, and you would have done the Chitas of Today. I wish you all a beautiful, happy, and healthy day. And Amir Shashem, we'll see you tomorrow at eight o'clock. We will continue the Chitas of the day. Have a wonderful day, everybody. God bless you all. See you very soon. I want to remind you all about Wednesday night to sign up the Chabad to, to uh, celebration 120FL.com. Celebration 120FL dot com and come together as a Jewish community in honor of the 120th birthday of the Rebbe. All the communities of Florida are coming together to give honor to the Rebbe. This is a once in a lifetime program that's good that uh, that we that we uh, we haven't done such a thing to come all together all the communities of South Florida to come all together in many many years. So therefore, it's not, it is not something that happens every year. This is an opportunity to come together as a Jewish community and honor the Rebbe on his 120th birthday. I hope you all book this and, uh, and make sure to be there. I wanted to say that those, for, you can call up the office, 487-2934. And there is, I believe, another 10 tickets that somebody has donated. So if you cannot afford to come, call up the office today. We have 10 tickets available. Somebody has sponsored and uh, we will put your name down and we will book the, the seat for you. So call the office at 487-2934. The first 10 people that call will get the tickets. I wish you all a wonderful and beautiful, happy and healthy day.